In Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, Bruce Wayne dons a reinforced armored batsuit, specifically designed to take on Superman. Realizing the immense power gap, he builds this suit to enhance his strength, durability, and resistance to Superman's attacks. The armor is layered with thick, durable plating, a helmet with a glowing, reinforced visor, and a voice modulator that makes Batman's voice more intimidating. The suit also integrates kryptonite weaponry, including a kryptonite-tipped spear, his primary tool to weaken Superman. This iconic battle-ready Batsuit reflects Batman's tactical mind and his willingness to do whatever it takes to protect humanity. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into the McFarlane DC Multiverse Dawn of Justice Armored Suit Batman. In this video, I'll break down the details of this figure and give you a side-by-side -side comparison with the regular and platinum edition releases. Let's jump right in. The figure stands at nearly 8 inches, about 20 centimeters, giving it a larger imposing scale. Here is next to the Action Comics Superman. And here with Captain Atom, which uses McFarlane's Blue Beetle's body mold as their standard male base. One of my favorite features is the cloth cape. The tattered edges are a perfect fit for this rugged, battle-worn look. And I have to end it to McFarlane for the seamless way they've integrated the fabric with the plastic. Very well done. Starting with the head sculpt, while McFarlane doesn't appear to have rights to the actor's likeness, it doesn't take away from the design. This head sculpt still stands out, especially with most of the face covered by the armored helmet anyway. Overall, they've really nailed the battle-worn look, with intricate details, dents, and chipping on the armor that adds realism. I also like the matte finish on the armor, enhancing the gritty feel instead of making it shiny and new. Now, let's have a look at the articulation. For the head articulation, you can do that. You can look down that far, which is pretty good. You can only look up that high. Actually, you can't even look up at all because of that. For the hands, you can do the T pose. Now the shoulder armor is okay, is connected here so it doesn't hinder with the arms rotation. He has a bicep cut. Which is very hard to rotate. Okay, there it is. And then at the same time, I don't know why Berlin does this with their uh, with their figure, but he only has a single joint elbow, so the only reach for this is only that much. And then there's also rotation here. Then for the wrist, it's a double 
egg wrist which can do that and that he has an abdominal cut which can do that he also has waist rotation together we can lean back that far it can lean forward a little side by side for the tie the tie swivel here actually works pretty well then you can kick back i uh, kick up that far kick back that far so for a guy in an armor we can actually do the split double jointed knee then for uncle rocker you can do that then toe articulation then you can also do the bend down which is pretty impressive for a figure in an armor now let's compare this with the platinum edition following mcperlane's logo guide the silver logo marks this as a recolor variant so if the darker gray color scheme isn't your thing you can skip it without missing essential features But here's the twist. McPerlane only included the Kryptonite Spear with the Platinum Edition, making it a Chase variant exclusive. For me, this is a bit frustrating because it means that to get the key accessory, you have to hunt down a rarer figure, which could turn some collectors away. Personally, in my case, I've already started cherry picking my McParlane purchases, sticking mainly to Batman, Green Lantern, and a few favorite DC characters because of marketing decisions like this that McParlane does. In terms of accessories, aside from the spear, both versions comes with two alternate hands. The Platinum Edition also has some green cell shading to simulate kryptonite glow. This restricts display options to a few angles depending on where the shading is applied. And also, just in case you're curious, this green cell shading is not glow in the dark. If I had to choose only one, I'd go with the regular release for its versatility, though the lack of a kryptonite spear is a drawback. Hopefully, we see some third-party options for a kryptonite spear in, you know, made with sturdier materials. On that note, McPerlin really needs to upgrade their soft plastic weapons. They become limp over time and it's a pain to get them straight. Overall, while both versions have their pros and cons, the decision on the exclusive accessory feels like a miss on McPerlane's part. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and if you're a fan of the Kryptonite look, does the Platinum Edition appeal to you? Thanks for watching and see you next time.